draws for the knockout stage of the UEFA Champions League and the playoff phase of the UEFA Europa League have served up some potential blockbusters. Let's start with the Champions League. Leipzig against Man City. Club Brugge with Benfica, Real Madrid and Liverpool, AC Milan and Tottenham Hotspur, Napoli appeared with Eintracht Frankfurt, Chelsea against Borussia Dortmund, Internazionale against FC Porto and Bayern Munich have been drawn with Paris Saint-Germain. All of the teams named first on that graphic, all of the teams named first on that graphic will be playing the first legs at home. So the teams named second will be playing the second legs at home. To help with our previews, the former TNT international Brent Sancho. Brent, let's get right to it. Real Madrid and Liverpool again. What should we expect? Even though, even though it's far away because we have almost all of November to go, all of December, all of January, and then we have to wait until Valentine's Day. So a lot can happen. Squads will be reinforced. But who do you think will be happier with the draw? If anybody is happy with this draw on the Liverpool or Real Madrid side. <laughs> Sprinkle a little warmth up of the top of all those parts that you just mentioned there as well. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm here. Go ahead now. We can start again. We didn't, yes, we didn't get just, the first part. Yeah, sprinkle a little World Cup on top of the months that you just mentioned as well uh, to, to add to it. And uh, I think when you look at it, I, th I think both teams certainly would not want to have been drawn against each other. Uh, I don't think either of the two would be happy. Uh, with the draw. That being said, of course, Real Madrid seemingly has uh, Liverpool number. I think Real Madrid has everyone number when it comes to the Champions League. At the end of the day, it's called their trophy. Uh, but going into it, you know, there's a feel maybe that Liverpool might find the sort of form uh, that they had before. Uh, I think that's difficult to, to suggest simply because one of their critical areas in the middle of the park, I don't see them strengthening that anytime soon, not even in the January window to help with the current situation. Uh, and Real Madrid is an ever-improving uh, team, particularly in the middle park as well, where their young guns uh, are starting to show uh, why they are so talked about and highly rated. One of the things that Liverpool fans say, identify as being a, a, a motivator for Champions League nights is the fact that Liverpool have won it six times. They are kingpins in Europe and they use it against most opponents as motivation that, look, we will come out on top because we have better pedigree. pedigree. They can't say that here. This is the one time, well, apart from AC Milan who won it seven times, this is the one team that Liverpool can't look in the eye and say that we are your equal in Champions League football. Real Madrid are by far and away the most successful team that dynamic the fact of history and pedigree how does that play out in this tie yet again yeah and to add to the, the psychological side to it uh, real madrid have beaten them in the recent past as you know uh, in the finals as well so i, I think it's a liverpool team and, and i might may add a liverpool team at that point in time that was firing in all cylinders so i think liverpool will look at this as a, of course a difficult tie they certainly come into it as underdogs um, they've not been playing well, they've been extremely inconsistent, they've been leaking goals. All of the things that, that of course, has moved away from what we know of the current modern-day Liverpool. So, from a Liverpool perspective, I think it's a very, very difficult draw. Uh, I think it's one that they would look at uh, and, and think that they have their work cut out for them. But I'll be as you rightfully said, Liverpool is a team that's done very well in this tournament. But they come up against a team that they've struggled against of, of recent. Brent, we just saw a Real Madrid team without Karim Benzema lose to Rayo Vallecano. Uh, would you say that Real Madrid has become extremely dependent on Karim Benzema? And you know, he's 34 years of age and right now he isn't playing because of muscular fatigue. So let's just say that time comes around, no Karim Benzema. What happens to this Real Madrid side? I wouldn't say dependent. I'd say he's an important player for Real Madrid. Uh, like, of course, Vinny Jr. Uh, for example, I think they are both important players for Real Madrid. Uh, but I think Real Madrid have been up within their locker to, of course, uh, defeat Liverpool. Of course, it's a, it's a situation where in the, the game tonight, of course, we're going to talk about it later in the broadcast, where they created numerous chances like Raya Vallecano, but was able to, to execute. Uh, but to say that Real Madrid without Karim Benzema will not be able to beat Liverpool might be a bit of a stretch because it's a very, very talented team, as I said. A lot of the younger players are seemingly now coming into him. Rodrigo is one of them, of course, uh, to name a few, that is doing very, very well of late. And I think they can cope without an important player, yes, but they can cope without him. 
Right and man for man, manager for manager, Jurgen Klopp up against Carlo Ancelotti. And most times when they face each other, Carlo Ancelotti has gotten the better of Jurgen Klopp. Talk to me about both men and of course what they would be able to bring. Yeah, and in particular, the, the last Champions League final, uh, of course, where Ancelotti, I thought, out thought uh, many. I, I, I'm, I'm the, one of them that uh, felt that Ancelotti, maybe, I'm not too sure, but uh, over the last uh, couple of years, he's certainly shown his tactical capabilities. Uh, and he's one of those managers that uh, not only just tactically smart, but he's extremely experienced and he applies his experience in the situations. And I think the Real Madrid players believe in Ancelotti, and I think if I was to give an edge currently, right now as we speak, I would give the edge to Ancelotti. Yeah, I think we have to accept to Brent that Liverpool, the Liverpool that played three of the last five finals, winning once, was a better Liverpool than the Liverpool we are looking at now. So I would, I would agree with you that Liverpool should go in his, as underdogs here. So let's move to Manchester City and uh, Horland, who now joins them to boost their uh, title hopes in the Champions League, a title they've never won before. Uh, your thoughts about City's draw and, and how likely they are to get a good start as they aim for the title? I think they'll be quite happy uh, with the fact that they face Leipzig, a team that plays a very high line defensively. Of course, that, that plays into the part of of the beautiful passing of Kevin De Bruyne into Haaland. So I think they'll be quite happy with that draw. They've, they've been very comfortable with German teams uh, and, and they would feel that they would get the better of the draw. You're correct. I think this is a season that Pep and the rest of the Manchester City people, staff uh, and players will look at it and think, look, this could be our year. Uh, when you look at the teams in and around them, uh, there's still one or two question marks that could be asked about them. But I think with the signing of, of Haaland uh, and that instant goal, type of person that they have and of course you have to add that to a very strong defensive side that we've seen now over the past two seasons uh, you would have to think that Man City are the favourites. Yeah and, uh, and Christopher Nkunku's pre-contract deal with Chelsea should take him to Stamford Bridge from the January transfer window so RB Leipzig will be a week when they play Man City in the last 16. Let's talk about Europa League action now because first leg, the first leg ties in the Europa League second round playoffs will take place on February, February 16 with the second leg set for February 23. In these playoffs, the eight runners-up from the Europa League group stage will battle the eight third-placed teams from the Champions League group stage. Now, the eight teams to advance from these two-way ties will then join the 16 Europa League group winners in the knockout phase of the competition starting in March. You're going to have 24 teams in March battling for honours in the Europa League. At the draw, Barcelona and Manchester United, Nantes and Juventus, Sporting Lisbon and Michelin, Shakhtar Donetsk and Rennes from France, Ajax drawn with Union Berlin, Bayer Leverkusen and AS Monaco, Sevilla and PSV Eindhoven and Jose Mourinho's AS Roma will play FC Salzburg. So the banner game in the Europa League, Barca and Manchester United, both teams from where they are now and where they can go between now and March, Brent, who will be happier with this draw? Uh, that's a tough one. I, I'm, I'm leaning towards Barcelona, but I think, George, you're very aware of my feelings as well as it relates to Xavi uh, and his uh, big-time coaching uh, experience. Uh, of course, Barcelona knocked out of the competition quite early last season as well. Uh, and I'm just not sold, guys, and whether or not uh, uh, A, Xavi understands his best team, uh, and B, whether or not he has the tacti tactical experience uh, to beat a team, although Manchester United is as well documented as in the rebuilding stages, but beat a dogged Manchester United team that, of course, you have to understand has a lot of experienced players within that locker room and could probably have that tie circled in their calendar. Uh, as I said, it's a difficult one. As much as I feel Barcelona is a better playing team now, I always have my question mark over Xavi. Not saying that he's, he's not going to be a good manager in the future. I'm looking at the now and I still have my question marks over him. What about Juve and Nantes? You're Juventus. Well, it seems to be a, a bit of an obstacle for Juventus. Uh, of course, four games on the trot in, in Italian Serie A. Uh, unfortunately, it's come quite late for them because they're out in the Champions League. But uh, I think uh, if they continue in the momentum, uh, and of course, we have to add that they're starting to get players back fit. Of course, Chiesa being a big one of that, they would be one of the names mentioned. Uh, moving forward. I think it's a very tough draw. But even throwing there, George, Sporting as well, I, 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 you know, it, it, 
I'm still shocked to see Sporting on this side of the bracket. We all know what they were able to do in the Champions League, but they're very unfortunate. Their, their luck ran out of them. Uh, but I just think it's a team that no one wants to meet. And I think in this Europa competition, if there was a dark horse, I would certainly pin it on Sporting. So will the winner of the Europa League, based on what you've seen from the group stage play and what you've seen of the teams who find themselves in the playoffs now, Will the winner of the Europa League you're predicting come from this playoff phase or will the group winners who are standing by waiting to be joined by the eight winners from these eight ties hold the key to the destiny of the trophy? I think Real Sociedad is one that, that may or may, I, I was really impressed with their performances. But uh, when you look at this phase of the draw, of course, the likes of Barcelona, Manchester United, Juventus, as we just mentioned. Of course, even if you add to that Sporting as well, I think they are formidable uh, opposition and, and I would suggest that that side of the draw probably has a better chance, of course, of going all the way than the ones that are sitting waiting. Marathon competition, we'll talk about it uh, over the months, well, the weeks and months to come. Brent Sancho, thank you very much for your time. Thanks very much, guys. Have a great one. Break and away we go here on the Sportsman Zone.